we used to think that sleep disorders were just an annoyance that, you know, you have to go through life to get some sleep and so you can be refreshed the next day. And sleep really is much more important than just getting the rest. We've discovered that um, many sleep disorders now have the ability to cause other health issues. So, for instance, somebody who has obstructive sleep apnea, if they don't sleep well, then it can change the chemicals in the body, the hormonal regulation of the body, uh, to produce things like high blood pressure, uh, uh, increased risk of stroke, heart attack, diabetes. So we're really seeing some serious health problems arise because people don't sleep well at night. It's always important to start with behaviors because many times patients' behaviors are counterproductive for sleep. So we want to make sure that people have an adequate sleep environment, that they have a good quality bed, mattress, pillow, that it's cool, it's dark, um, quiet enough. Um, we want them to unplug before they go to sleep at night. We don't want them to be watching television, uh, especially young children, uh, because they will uh, get a little bit revved up and, and not be able to settle down and go back to sleep. Um, so we want to make sure that we prepare ourselves for sleep and have the opportunity to sleep. We have melatonin-based uh, medications like Rosarum. There is Ambien. It's all in, in the media these days. Lunesta, similar medications like that. They can be helpful, but they can also have drawbacks too. They can be potentially habit-forming for some individuals. Uh, over time, they may not work. They may not be effective if they are used night to night. Um, but for some people, they can be helpful on a long-term basis. It just depends on the person and what the problem is. We have the ability to bring a person into the sleep laboratory to take a look at what's going on with their sleep. And so they usually come in in the evening time. Uh, they usually have a private room. Uh, they are um, given monitors uh, on the brain so we can monitor their brainwave activity to know whether they're awake or asleep. We look at monitors that will measure their heart rate, their pulse, their breathing pattern, their body movements, and their videotape so we can understand what's going on. The gold standard for management of obstructive sleep apnea is a CPAP machine. Um, they aren't the most attractive things to have to wear to bed, but they have an efficacy of 90%. So uh, most patients do get benefit from using a CPAP machine. Uh, there are many new styles of masks uh, available. There are several different types of CPAP machines. CPAP means continuous positive airway pressure. Um, we also have BiPAP, which is a uh, what we call bi-level system where they get a higher pressure of air when they breathe in and a lower pressure of air when they breathe out. The mechanism of, the, of these machines is basically like an air pump to deliver pressurized air so that their airway doesn't collapse when they are trying to sleep at night. If someone has a mild amount of sleep apnea, they're, they're not all that fatigued, e even simple weight loss can be a benefit for some individuals. We also have dental appliances that can be used to treat sleep apnea. And for some people, that's a little bit more of an attractive option than using a CPAP machine. It's like wearing a retainer in your mouth when you go to sleep at night, and it's designed to pull your, your tongue and jaw forward when you sleep, so it helps to prevent the airway from collapsing at that point at the base of the tongue.